Welcome to To Hatch Pod. Sit back and relax as Key Budge and Corey Costello talk about things that are happening in and around To Hatchapi. Here's Corey and Key. Another episode of To Hatch a Pod. I'm Key Budge, Corey Costello. In studio, we've got special guests. We've got uh, Lisa Stevens and Kristen Hanley from Syracuse College. Ladies, welcome to uh, To Hatch a Pod. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having us today. Corey and I, we, we've been talking about, you know, Saracoso in the past, over the past couple of years, in uh, the fact that Saracoso's footprint has grown here in Tehachapi considerably, and it's great to have you guys in here so we can talk mm-hmm. about things that uh, you've got available for our students, not only the young, but people my age too, the old, <laughs> as we kind of chatted before we went on the air, so uh, we're excited to, to talk about what's coming and yeah. Obviously, there's been some changes in the way education and adult education. Blow, yeah, and it blows my mind just driving by that campus because I went to junior high in that building. <laughs> like, that was my junior. Matter of fact, I, the, the, the part, I call it the new part, although it was built in 1994. Um, but a lot of the classroom space that you all utilize was, was built between my 7th and 8th grade year. So we got to open that as the new part of the school that, back then. So it's great that when you drive by now, it blows my mind to see, you know, Saracosa Community College out front, Tehachapi Campus. Campus. And I'm like, you know, and originally that was the high school way back in the day. So mm-hmm. it's really cool to see that building just continue to evolve in education and now to have not only a, a, a community college, but one with career technical education involved. It's it's a big step for, for Tehachapi. Well, Lisa, you know, you're in charge of multiple campuses. You're the director over the East Kern uh, satellite campuses Correct. that we've got and we've and that's growing as well it seems like I was looking at the list today it's and how many do you have in your charge so um, East Kern for our service areas it includes Tehachapi um, I also oversee a campus in Lake Isabella we have a small little satellite um, campus at Edwards Air Force Base and then we also offer courses throughout our smaller communities at Cal City Mojave Boron uh, for our high schoolers uh, through uh, dual enrollment or concurrent enrollment. So it is pretty, uh, it's a large area to oversee, but it gives me the opportunity to meet so many uh, different community members, work with different community leaders to really bring in higher education in our rural areas, in the areas where students um, may not initially have those type of opportunities. So to bring in uh, classes to kind of work with them on that. In this area, and Corey, you grew up here. I didn't. I, I moved the family up here 15 years ago, but it became one of those things you have to think about just physically where you're at and where the nearest campuses are. And when my son was starting to go, Saracosa didn't have the Tehachapi campus open yet. But what a blessing that is to have that uh, Tehachapi campus here. And Kristen, you're part of the Tehachapi campus. I, I am. Yes. No. Definitely. Um. It's 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 great up here. Um. I I manage both Edwards Air Force Base and Tehachapi, but yeah, the opportunities um up here that we're giving the students are incredible, and there's a lot of that they can take advantage of. Yes, and and to add, if you think about it, um, in the state of California, there's a total of 115 community colleges. <laughs> Um, throughout from Northern California to Southern California. So 115, if you think of all the cities, um, large and small, Tehachapi is one of those communities that have one of those out of the 115 community colleges. And so we're absolutely Mm -hmm. blessed to be here and we are really excited about continuing to grow um, and to be off, and to be able to offer more classes and uh, programs. You know, one of the things that that I've found was very, very interesting. It seems like Saracosa is being as a community college has been a little, I guess, forward thinking. A lot of the stuff. It's not the necessarily traditional. I'm always going to just show up to class and I have a class three days a week and it's nine to whatever. Um, but a couple of the programs that man, I wish they had these when I was back in school. We ought to save my parents a ton of money in college tuition. Was the dual, you know, the dual enrollment, the ability to be in high school and also get college credit in Tehachapi without leaving the couple block radius of the kind of Tehachapi Education Center with uh, Tehachapi High School and Saracosa Community College. For those who don't know, um, dual enrollment is basically when a high school student um, takes a course, a college course, and they actually take it at the high school during period one, period two, whatever that, that period is. And at the end of the semester, that student, whatever that student's grade is in that college course, they get college credit and they get high school credit, which is a little bit different than the AP classes, right? right? So if you're in an AP class, um, you take that class the entire semester, but you must take a test at the end of that semester. And if you pass, 
you get college credit. But if you do not pass that test, you do not get college mm -hmm. credit. So with dual enrollment, it's kind of a, an innovative way to work with high schoolers to get college credit and high school credit at the same time. Yeah. And with the with the talks of reopening schools post COVID nineteen, there's a lot of talks of keeping keeping days separate and not having too many students on campus. So, could you see a position where maybe your dual enrollment's more popular because you're being able to shift some more students from the high school into your campus potentially to take to take those courses? I would definitely say so um, because again, you have more opportunities um, for students to take advantage of. So. Definitely. And one area that we're, um, we were able to do here in Tehachapi, basically out of all of the communities that we serve for Saracoso, the community of Tehachapi is the one that we're able to start what was called an early college program. And what that means is um, our juniors and seniors at the high school, they're able to go half day at the high school. So for instance, from I don't know, 7.30 in the morning to 11 a.m. and take their high school classes. But at 11 a.m., they're actually able to leave the high school campus and come to the college campus and take college classes for the rest of their day, the rest of their high school day, or longer if they decide mm -hmm. to stay after high school. But what's really awesome about that is students that have sports, they have, you know, after school, like high school students that have sports or after school activities, they're able to take those college classes from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m and then still be able to participate in other yeah. high school activities. And so to get that college credit out of the way, we, we know of students that graduate from high school with 12 units of college credit, 24 units, and some actual high schoolers are graduating with a two-year AA degree wow. before they walk <laughs> across their high school graduation. Wow. And so they're starting as juniors yeah. at universities or sophomores at universities. Right. And the, the key is, I think, and I think this is what parents are going to love, is they do not have to pay any tuition for those classes. Yeah. It's completely free tuition for high schoolers. So any college classes that they take during those high school years, no tuition That at would all. have been great because, you know, my senior went to school till like, noon. Yeah. And then I messed around to football practice. Like I didn't have any classes to take, and so I could I could use constructive time. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And then that also, if if you're going, at least if I'm thinking back to my college days, way, way, way back, that would put you in line to register for those classes as you're coming in as a sophomore, or you know, at least advanced in your freshman. So those that are coming in with zero college credits, they wait till the last day that they're <laughs> eligible yeah. to mm -hmm. register for classes. Mm -hmm. And if you come in with nine units or 12 units, you're up a day or yeah. two ahead of time picking classes that might not be available for those. And that you don't get stuck in all the early budget. ones. Right. right. You don't get stuck in the 730 ones on college campus. There's yeah. nothing worse than the 730 class well, in college. I, I just remember <laughs> you know, classes get impacted and it's like something that's right. only maybe offered in the, the fall semester. Yeah. And you're not going to be able to get it that first year you're going. Now this might bump you right up into that mm -hmm. category that it's, it might be still hanging on the tree for you to pick. It's, you're absolutely correct. The other great thing is, and I have personal experience, I, uh, my daughter, um, I had her take uh, college classes while she was in high school. I want to say she um, ended up taking uh, approximately 16 units. Well, when she had applied to San Jose State, she took the SAT test, and she didn't do as well because um, obviously test anxiety and other things happen. But when San Jose, San Jose State University saw that she had taken 16 college units, prior to high school, graduating from high school, that really did bump her into being able to be accepted mm -hmm. because that showed um, that university that she was able to take college coursework and successfully complete it. And so that's why it's just such an amazing opportunity that we want to get out in the community that this is available for the high schoolers. And please take advantage, call us, we'll, we'll definitely provide more information. You know, with the classes, that, are there a certain type of class that's available for the, the kids in that high school uh, that might go in that dual program? What's, what the might be? Of, the, the type of classes that we have at Tehachapi, it all depends on if the high school instructor is uh, eligible to teach college courses. So they have to have a master's degree in the specific subject that they're teaching. So we have um, an admin of justice class up there. We have a math instructor who teaches three math classes two college algebra classes and one um, calculus class. And then we also have the digital media. There's a gentleman up there who does four sections of digital media. So we have a total of eight classes nice. running in the fall. So it really just depends on who's who the instructors are um, 
as to what degrees, what their background is, as to whether we can use them or not. And so that's under the dual enrollment side right. where those high schoolers are taking them at the high school. Right. But then if they come down, if they come to the uh, early college program, then classes that we offer from 11 a.m. to around 3 p.m. is like, for instance, political science and economics, mm -hmm. two classes that a senior in high school will need for graduation high school-wise. So that they could take political science one semester, economics or U.S. government the second semester, and get dual credit for that. So they get college credit and high school credit. Nice. Other classes like American Sign Language, ASL, completely meets that foreign language requirement for UCs. Um, so we offer a, a sign language one and two um, every year, uh, fall semester and spring semester. Um, other classes that our high schoolers are taking at the college campus during our early college program, English, everybody needs that yeah. English, you can call it 1A or 101 and English 1B or 102. Those are general ed requirements for any type of uh, graduation, speech, math, et cetera. And so um, all, all the classes are open to our high schoolers. They can actually take up to 11 units per semester. So there is a cap. And the very first semester, um, students who want to enroll in the program uh, are allowed to take one class. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that they're prepared and they can be successful because keeping in mind, whatever grade you get is on your transcript. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to, you know, don't we don't want to overwhelm a student their first semester. But after that semester, if if the parent and the student and their high school counselor and our counselors agree, they can take up to 11 units a semester. Wow. And that's a good chunk. I mean, 11 units is pretty much a, you know, almost a full load at a university level or two thirds of your load at the university level. They kind of recommend around 17 units. So that's a, uh, that's an impressive, I mean, mom and dad thinking in terms of just finances, this is going to help save you when you get to the university system, uh, after, you know, after they accepted in another college. Exactly. Exactly. And I know another thing too, that is, I know when I started here from the economic development side, I really kind of thought about how can we rethink education? Because you know, I'm, and I'm a product of the four-year college system. That's just a traditional route I took because uh, a lot of this cool stuff wasn't around then. But, um, you know, we, we've gotten to an, an area now where we need a lot of – we need more trades. We need more uh, career sort of minded and, and technical education stuff. And so there was this kind of thought to, to work with Saracoso to come up with this sort of – you know, work as you get trained and trained to go to work. And so you all have a, a pretty impressive uh, portfolio of, of CTE uh, style classes that are available here in, uh, in Tehachapi. Absolutely. Um, when we spoke with you, Corey, or, or, or um, the community, one of the areas that was an interest was business, mm -hmm. um, business classes. So we, we heard you guys, we heard the community's needs and wants, and we ended up actually hiring a full-time business instructor. So now we are starting to bring in business classes, right. and we are going to be creating uh, different business programs, certificates for mm -hmm. those who just want to get that workforce training, one or two semesters, get a certificate and get into work, and uh, degrees for those who want an actual business degree and want to transfer on uh, to a university. Mm -hmm. And so that was one area of, uh, you can call it workforce training, development, or career technical education. Um, the other areas I'm very excited to announce um, with the help of our, one of our full-time administration of justice faculty members, Peter Folks, um, we have brought over now a, a police academy. Um, it is post-certified. Um, and we offer level three and level two. There are actually three levels in order to get your post certificate. Level three and level two, once completed, you can actually become a reserve mm -hmm. on a police department or sheriff's department. Um, and then once you complete level one, you actually have a post certificate and you can apply to different type of law enforcement agencies um, and meet that academy qualification. So when you apply, you don't have to go back through another academy. Right. You've completed it. And so to bring uh, a post-recognized police academy to the city of Tehachapi at uh, Saracosa Community College campus is phenomenal because let's keep in mind, post only allows so many um, certificated programs in the whole state of California. Mm -hmm. And so that's starting uh, uh, in August, our, our level three. And they're physically, they're, they're far apart, these post-academies you know, at, at Rio Hondo, you know, that's, that's correct. That's a ways. Mm -hmm. And then we're talking up in, uh, just South of Fresno, the, uh, was a college of Sequoias yes. that has another one. So this really kind of takes care of people right in the middle yes. that are trying to pick which one do I go to? Because 
it's it's a drive, you know, to go along with the academy training that that goes on, the physical demand and also the educational demand to get mm -hmm. that those different levels of post. So this is a, a big need. It fills a, a need uh, for law enforcement for sure. But uh, I think there's a lot of people in this area that that's a vocation of, you know, curiosity, yeah. if, and, if nothing else. And you and you've had a class go through that, correct? Already, there's been one that's yes. wrapping up or just wrapped up. In spring, we excuse me. In spring, <laughs> we um, had a level three. Okay. Um, we're going to offer another level three again. Okay. Um, because of course, spring was our very first semester. We were just starting, um, and so we are going to offer again another level three, and then we're going to continue on yeah. um, for that academy. So that is definitely brand new, hot off the press. Um, so we're excited about that. Yeah. And then other areas that we um, offer uh, workforce uh, development is a EMT, emergency medical technician. So if those who are interested in uh, working for an ambulance company, um, helping people in that field, uh, it's one semester, 16 weeks. Uh, it preps you for the uh, state examination. And then at the end of the class, you take the state exam. And then if you pass, then you can continue on working in that field. So that is another um, course that we offer every single semester. And welding. Welding is another area we've uh, actually partnered with the high school. So they are allowing us to use their actual welding classroom. Pretty we, impressive. It's an impressive facility they have up yeah, there for sure. So we, um, we purchased some equipment. Um, what's kind of neat is it's kind of a, a partnership also with adult education, with Tehachapi High School's adult education. Mm -hmm. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kristen, two days a week, adult ed offers a, a welding course. Mm -hmm. Those who take that course can actually... We can articulate that credit, meaning if um, yeah. once that student who is in an adult ed welding course completes, they take a test. If they pass the test, kind of like AP in a sense, they get a community college credit for that class, and they can move on to our next level of welding that the Saracoso offers. But we also offer um, introductory, introductory welding 101, welding 102. Um, we're getting in the higher levels this year. Um, it's called Welding 200. I think it's fabrication. I don't know. I have to like verify that. Um, but Sounds good enough. It's like a, you, know, you can actually get a, a certificate wow. in, in that field. So. And that's you know Mike Rowe. I'm a big Mike Rowe fan, right. who, and he's and that's one thing that he pushes is like the welding and these different trades mm -hmm. that have kind of gone by the wayside, you know, in the United States, and that we've got a program where they can be certified, you know, in a high paying field that's in demand because people are timing out they've right. they're retiring from those careers and it hasn't been something that's been pushed and supported so it's nice to see the support uh, go to something like that i know mike rowe would be happy if he was sitting here <laughs> yeah. well it goes back to that model that i was talking about too i mean you know, not every student and every young person has the ability to go straight from high school to college whether it's financial socioeconomics whatever it might be so they need to get a job and a lot a lot of what happens especially in tehachapi because you know we've seen it they can't afford to go to college. Maybe they weren't that great student, and so they just go to work, and then they maybe don't pursue the career. But these kind of opportunities to be able to get a job to pay the bills, but then also in the evenings, go get your welding certificate, not have to drive to Bakersfield, not have to go to the Antelope Valley and, and have to incur that additional expense of, of your, tr your transportation and stuff. I mean, these are the kind of things that really help pull people into that next you know they let them continue to dream a little bit if so will you just because they get the opportunity to to do that somewhere close and not have to you know join the masses and other much larger campuses exactly and and you had mentioned like Antelope Valley and, and Bakersfield they're so impacted their their classes yeah. are so impacted so we're here um, of course, we want to get to that level. Um, we're working <laughs> towards it, but sure. there definitely is room, and uh, we have room to grow. And so that's why we we came to Tehachapi. We invested, um, and had, you had mentioned that um, the the campus located off Snyder had been formerly, you know, a junior high and high school. Right. And so now we are actually the only tenants in there. We are we have grown. Um, we were initially in one hallway. Right. Now we have um, taken over more classes inside the building and in the quad area. For those who went to school there, you'll That's know right. that quad area. There's a bunch of classrooms out there. Yeah. And so um, so we're continuing to grow and, and want to offer more classes. And, and really, we'd love to hear from the community. If you have any thoughts, ideas um, of classes that you'd be interesting, interested for us to offer, let us know, right? Because feedback is really important. Well, I know a, a couple of years ago, you guys really reached out 
and were asking about classes. And I was one who was saying welding. I want to take welding. My wife and I wanted to take welding class for us for our little ranch so we could, you know, become more self-sufficient and just for fun. But you guys listened. And then there was enough feedback and other people throwing like the welding. And you guys, hey, there's, there's going to be a place. It's not just going to be we're going to offer it and no one shows up. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. And sure enough, I mean, the programs, I've, I've heard a lot of people that have gone, that have been taking the classes. They've really, really enjoyed it and get something out of it. So just the fact that the community outreach that you guys did early on coming in, it was noticeable. And I think that's Great. probably some of the return that you're seeing as the success and the growth, yeah. just based on asking, what, what is it you guys are looking for? Exactly, definitely, because the community members are the experts, right? I mean, we want to hear from them. We want to know what they're interested in. Yeah. Uh, when we started a few years ago, we only had night classes. Now we have expanded to day classes because those um, parents who have um, kids in school during the day, <laughs> they were more apt to be able to come to classes during the day, right? right? Um, the night classes weren't meeting those needs because that by that time, you know, five, six o'clock comes around, kids are home from school and now they're taking care of the, the kids. And so, and vice versa, those who have jobs during the day need to take classes at night. So now that we've, ex now that we've expanded, we've been able to kind of start early in the morning um, and then go late into the evening to cr try to reach the needs of, of all of our students. What about the, you know, the outreach too on the other side of things? I know for a while, uh, and it sounds like you've got a great staff on board as you continue to build, but there was even a desire for people in the community to help become teachers and, and, and adjunct professors. And so is that need still out there as you sort of grow? Because obviously you can offer a class, but you need someone to teach it. <laughs> there's, you know what, there's always a need. We're always looking for instructors. So we definitely, um, you know, if you know, if anyone knows anybody, definitely um, send us the resumes because we're always hiring. <laughs> <laughs> and, and in the area of community college, at any community college, if you're more, if your background is more in the liberal arts and sciences side, like math, English, history, mm -hmm. the requirement is a master's degree in that discipline. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives you an idea. The career technical education side or the workforce development side, of course, education is important, but we want to find individuals who have experience in that field. Mm -hmm. Because I could have a bachelor's degree in industrial technology, but if I've never welded anything before in my life, how can I teach someone to... <laughs> weld a bead or whatever. I'm probably not saying the right terminology, <laughs> but you know, uh, the practical so, application, practical is, yeah. application. Is huge. So for those on our more of our career technical education side, we're looking at, yeah, an A degree and maybe six years experience or a bachelor's degree and two years experience, but we really want experience. Mm -hmm. Um, so we can lead the next generation in that field. Yeah. And I know we have a lot of that. There's that there is that retired element up here that maybe they were the long-term professor and institutional exactly, knowledge. Exactly. And they're, <laughs> and they're retired, but they kind of like to teach still a little bit and they might be okay to take a class a week or a couple of weeks to, to, uh, you know, to continue to teach a little bit. So that's why I want to throw that out there because I know we have that element that lives in the Tatchby area. They were, you know, taught at larger universities and they've retired, but they still want to keep themselves busy. So yeah. definitely give us a call. Um, you can always get a hold of myself or Kristen Hanley. Um, and, and just reach out to us because we absolutely love to hear from you. Yes. Now let's talk, go back to the high school kids and the dual enrollment program. There's some parents that get, they're like, hey, I got to make sure that, that mine is thinking about this. <laughs> or what, it's, what, what do they need to do to get involved to, to sign up and enroll? Are they looking for that as they're heading into signing up for classes for their senior year? What's that, that process? You know, they can sign up. As a freshman, you can start taking dual enrollment classes. Um, as a high school freshman? As a high school okay. freshman. So it really is talking to your high school counselor, because the high school counselors are very involved with us as well. And mm -hmm. I will tell you, every single week, a high school, I'm, I'm sorry, a college counselor is there to right. visit with the students and answer questions. So to really get involved, but to talk to the high school counselor, because they will then get, it, get them to us. But I, because they're a big advocate for this. Should they be filling out the online application at the, for yes. the regular college? or, or Yes, as, yeah, you have to do the online application as well as a concurrent enrollment form, which is a hard copy form. But yes, I mean, there is no harm in doing the application. I mean, I would recommend doing that right away. And then even if they don't do this right out the door in the, in the ninth grade, it's still done and it will always be there. So it's just one less thing to do cool. when you actually decide to do it. 
and that app, online application process that is that's within the Kern County Community College District. So that that application. So if w- is I just it's, it's I, on our Saracosa website. Right. You literally go to admissions and records, and then the students have options as to what kind of a student they are. And if you're in high school, you're going to click on high school concurrent enrollment, and it goes right into what exactly is high school uh, doing a dual enrollment class, and the applications attached. But if a student decided they wanted to do something at BC. Mm-hmm. But they want to take advantage of this. The, the systems talk to each other, they right? Totally. Okay. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. So we're, in, uh, so Saracoso is under Kern, Com- Kern Community College District. Okay. So what that means is Bakersfield College and Porterville College are our sister colleges because mm-hmm. we're all one in a sense, under a current community college, like separate colleges. Sure. But the student ID that you have for Saracoso actually works for BC and Porterville College, or vice versa. If you have a student ID that you initially created through Bakersfield College, that student ID works with Saracoso. And you it's the same type of enrollment process, et cetera. So that's really pretty awesome where if you think about it, one application actually gives you access to three colleges. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you kind of look forward to this next year, and, uh, you know, I know you're kind of a, a different model than your regular education, but, um, you know, your fall class is going to start in, in late August. What has everyone's talking about what the post-COVID-19 world looks like? Does that change your operations at all? I mean, you can control class sizes a little bit more at the community college level than you could say at the high school level or something. So uh, what kind of discussions are you all having about that? So um, we're definitely having discussions. <laughs> Um, at this point, um, we are moving forward with on-site classes, mm-hmm. uh, though a final decision will be made on what on what that looks like sure. by July 15th. Gotcha. Um, does that look like uh, more of a hybrid model where uh, what that means is basically, let's say a class is two days a week, Monday and Wednesday. You have 20 students. 10 students will show up on Monday and get instruction from the faculty member and then the rest of the week they finish their class mm-hmm. online and then vice versa the other 10 students would show up on wednesday get the same instruction and then have right. to finish that other portion of the class gotcha. so we are going to be looking at um, if we do go back on site which at this point that's what we're looking at moving forward with uh, the physical distancing physical distancing um, definitely um, so that's going to impact classroom sizes but we're going to work around that sure other ways on how to do that. Um, of course, if a class is size is small enough, we won't have to worry about it. Yeah. We can still distance everybody. Um, obviously, um, in regards to making sure everything is sanitized and clean and just really taking as many precautions as we can sure. to make sure our students and faculty and staff are all safe. Perfect. No, I just, I, I'm super excited just to see you, the, the transformation and how much it's grown in the last couple of years is that I've been able to witness. And then just to have that, that building be reused and to get a, to have a, a college campus and a growing college campus there is amazing because it's not just you're here and you're offering a few night classes, like you're here and you're growing every year, which, which I think is, is important for the community to understand. Definitely. And um, we want to continue to grow. Our college also offers online courses, but we really want to see growth here at Tehachapi on our on-site classes, right? Um, Because the more that we can grow on-site, the more classes we can offer. And so, um, as always, we will service any student online, on-site. The on-site experience of going to college, the engagement factor, seeing faculty, meeting faculty, um, staff on campus, is a completely different experience. So mm-hmm. we always highly recommend if you're able to go on site, do that. Sometimes students think online classes are easier. I'll be honest with you, they are not. Yeah. It is more work. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and then all of a sudden that deadline comes at like Sunday at like 10 p.m., right? And it's like Sunday at like 8 p.m. and yeah. you're on the computer trying to finish. It definitely on site um, gives you um, definitely more of a college experience, I yeah. would say, rather than online. I know that here at Tehachapi, the city of Tehachapi, one of our staff members just got their AA degree, went through while working, went back to school because that was a goal of theirs is to have that AA and went back while 
working full time and was able to knock off the classes that they needed to to get that AA. And it was because Saracosa was physically here in town, they were able to accomplish that goal. And that's, I, I, these are little things. It's not just, right. the, you know, kids that are in high school or perhaps they're they're finishing high school. It's adults and, and we can go back and complete goals. And whether it's online, it's on campus, one class at a time. I know I had gone back because I didn't, I'd gone to, uh, my personal journey was going to community college, got my AA degree, transferred over to university, and burned myself out because I was working (laughs) too because I had to put myself through. And I thought, well, you know, some 10, 15 years later, I go, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. And I took one class just to to see if I I still had it in me. And then that got the juices flowing. And then in the next semester, I took two. And then there was three. And it was, it was one of those things that we can utilize in the, that this closeness that we have to the campus, this connection to further our personal goals, you know, and it might help in the workplace, but just the, the sense of accomplishment, it was one of those senses of pride that I had that I, I can go back and still do this at this age. Absolutely. Um, when you take that class and you pass, that's a success, right? And you continue and you get that degree, it's another success, but it's a success that nobody can ever take it away, right? Mm-hmm. And so just the accomplishment of, working hard for 16 weeks and literally, for example, my husband, he took a class at Saracoso Spanish. He said literally after every class, his brain hurt him. <laughs> like he could physically <laughs> feel pain in his, in his brain from taking Spanish. But he worked hard, he finished it in 16 weeks and he was just absolutely thrilled because he, it was a success. And um, so you're absolutely right, Key. It, just taking the classes. If you haven't been back to school in a while, it definitely, you, you will have probably a little anxiety, yeah. you know, and that's okay. We call it the fear factor. Um, you know, sometimes students who haven't taken classes in years and years, 10 years, 20 years, they'll drive up to the college, they'll sit in the parking lot and it will literally anxiety will take over because just to get out of the car, you <laughs> right, know, to right. get into the yeah. campus, right? Cause yeah. it's been so many years, but that's okay. That's why we have amazing staff. We have amazing yeah. faculty to work with students one-on-one. Um, so we just recommend take that one class. Right. Test it out um, because you will be surprised in a really positive way how it will positively affect you. And it's good, too. Like, you get that mix. And this is, you get, you know, obviously, Saracosa is one of those campuses you get that mix of the regular student, maybe on that normal course, and the student that's uh, maybe a little older that has been years. I mean, I know my my difference between my bachelor's degree and my master's degree was 12 years. I had a 12-year gap, and I, went, I kind of felt that way 12 years later. And granted, at the time, I worked at a college campus, but I still was going into a classroom. And, and you know, being at, at, at Cal State Bakersfield, they had a lot of older students, too, that took the evening courses. So it was okay because you had that mix of the kid that just got out with their bachelor's degree pursuing their master's. And so you kind of felt comfortable after a while. And it was a good mix uh, as well. And that certainly helped a little bit knowing that there's people like you. And then you're also dealing with people that, you know, are, are a little younger, too. So it's kind of fun, uh, you know, in, 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 in a way, too, for sure. And where do we want to send everyone? What's the, to the website? So, yes. Yeah, so if you go to our main Saracosa website, uh, www.sierracoso, C-E-R-R-O, coso, C-O-S-O dot E-D-U, on the top of the um, website page, you're going to see a tab that says campuses. So if you click on campuses, you will specifically see a, a link to Tehachapi. And from there, it gives you our information, our location, phone numbers, um, and then our schedule. So um, may, may, hopefully many of you have seen in the Tatchby News, we've been putting out um, some inserts uh, for our upcoming fall classes. Uh, so it provides the community information on what classes we're going to be offering, days and times. And so that information that were that was located in the flyer is also on our schedule online. Um, also, you can call our campus at um, Monday through Thursday from... 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. The number is 661-823-4986. I have an amazing department assistant, Christy Nichols. She will answer the phone and answer pretty much any question that you throw at her. So uh, give us a call. Um, Classes start August, um, at the end of August. August 24th. Thank you. August 24th. I'm just, I'm just double checking. She's actually nailed every bit of information on this on flyer, flyer so far. Thank you. So uh, um, anyway, I thought so there'd be a cyst out right there. You have time, <laughs> but don't wait. You know, classes do fill up. So yeah. um, we'd love to see you. Is there anything that we didn't ask you that you guys would like to, to mention or we cover things? 
No, this has been phenomenal. <laughs> I just want to, I want to say, to say thank you to Corey and your team. And I'm not just saying this because I'm obviously on this podcast. The, the city of Tehachapi and the employees have been just so welcoming to be able to come into a community brand new as a community college yeah. and get that type of support is just priceless. So I just want to say thank you, Corey, and to you and your team and Key for bringing us in today. Just being able to talk about what we do and what can be done at the college here locally is once again priceless. So we just really appreciate all the support from your guys' teams and the community. I was super happy to help. And even little things too. I mean, we had, right when you all kind of got, got going a few years ago, there was a push. You wanted to get freeway signs up. And we wanted freeway, freeway signs as well. We wanted to just know that when people drove through that there was a higher education presence here. And I remember uh, some of the folks in your team trying to deal with Caltrans, and they said, well, your enrollment's got to be this and that. And so we got creative and basically said, well, you do classes at the prison as well. You offer classes at, at, the, at CCI in Tehachapi. Correct. And so that got to count for the enrollment. And guess what? There are now freeway signs on Highway 58 marking Absolutely. the Saracosa Tehachapi yeah. exactly. campus. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> so, Definitely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Happy to help any way we can. <laughs> Thank you both, uh, Kristen and Lisa, Thank for coming you. in. It, it was a pleasure. And I know we're going to invite you back. So hopefully Please. this was a good experience yeah. yes. and we can come back and talk about it and see maybe once uh, we know a little bit more about what school's going to look like physically, you know, as we're constantly changing and setting up the protocols and things, and uh, we'll send that message out. Wonderful. So. We would really appreciate it. So Great. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Saracosa College, it's a part of our Tehachapi family now. Mm -hmm. They've been here, I think, long enough where we can say they, they even though they're based in Ridgecrest, that's where they were formed and, and grew yeah. as an educational institution. They're now a part of the Tehachapi fiber. Yeah, they've done a great job, too. I mean, coming in and starting and expanding, and they've been a great tenant for, for what was the Tatchby Education Center, and then prior to that, a uh, junior high years ago, Monroe was there. And so to have that, to take over that building and that facility and just grow each year is is awesome to see and offer really those courses that fall in line with what the community is asking for is is great, and that's just less traveling you have to do off off the mountain, which is really our goal, whether it comes shopping, retail, restaurants, the fewer trips you have to leave and drive 40 minutes for the better i i just love the fact that when they came in and i know we talked about it on on it during the the discussion with them was the fact that they came in asking what does Tehachapi want yeah yeah and, 100%. They, and they're delivering on that so we want to remind everyone if you want to check out their catalog of courses register get your high school student sign up for the dual education it's www.sarocoso Dot edu and Sarah with two R's two and Coso R's. with one S. <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> dot edu and all the information is right there. We've got some other things coming up, Corey. Yeah, everybody's favorite season is upon us uh, here very soon. Uh, public safety power shut off. <laughs> season oh, oh uh, one crisis to another right we're <laughs> right. gonna go from one health emergency yeah. to no but it, we're gonna have cal rossi who's who's a, a government affairs representative he's he's our guy that we deal with and and cal and his local team have been awesome and i know uh you know when it comes time to power shut off a lot of folks looked at edison and and were kind of upset but these guys locally man they they worked their tails off and last year you know, we had a lot of candid conversations with them. I and mean, our first ever podcast that we did for this show was a, their town hall event, Senator Grove's town hall event, addressing this. And, and these guys have worked a lot, though, to either harden the grid in various areas in the city or in the surrounding greater Tatchby area. There's uh, to, to all they've got a whole bunch of stuff they've done to pr hopefully prevent more of these if not this year, the following year. So it's going to be good to get an update on that stuff because there's a lot that's happened. You've seen the trucks. Uh, the economic impact of these these contractors being in the town the last year has been massive, too. They're doing a lot of work, and, and obviously they don't want wildfires. They don't want the liability. They don't want the property destruction, and we don't want that either, and we also want our power on, so <laughs> trying to figure that out. And the PSPS, even though we are the city of Tehachapi's podcast, this is about what's going on in Stallion Springs yeah. and Bear Valley. Uh, Cummings Valley and Golden Hills as well, and just know that we're we're talking and for yeah. you as well where we can. And you know, coming in today, I passed because I live outside in in the the far west end, and I think I passed. They were swapping out, or they were running new line, the new yeah. insulated line. Yep. yep. Uh, 
to those outline areas, and I think they were going through at least 10 or 12 poles. Mm-hmm. It was covering more than a mile, and they probably had 25, 30 guys out there. So yeah. they're working extensively. And the PSPS, it's, it's here. It, we're going to be dealing with it. Yeah. But I think if they can shorten the durations because yeah. they started to harden some of that infrastructure... I, it, for me, I was, you know, 40 hours, you know, and 72 hours at a time with no power, and that has an impact on you. If they can cut that, yeah. or we can start looking at maybe 24 hours or less than, right. it's not something I want to deal with, but it's it's a little easier to swallow, and it's easier as I get older, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to deal with the extreme heat and conditions. So, yeah. I mean, we've got some things to talk to with Cal, and, and uh, I know Edison listened to what our conversation yeah. was last year. Germany I mean, we, we really took a leadership role and you brought that up for like every community, not just the city limits. I mean, every community we were really uh, advocating for because it was, we're trying to make the point because Tatchby was a slightly overlooked and not by Cal and his local team, but by the decision makers that were flipping switches down South. Yeah. They didn't know who we were and they were just making these decisions. So that's changed because, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And so that's, we'll talk more about that. I'm right. looking forward to speaking with Cal. It'll be a good discussion. And we promise yeah. that he will get out alive. Yeah, we like Cal. Like, there's not ever to tell him, you know. I, you know, sometimes I might not like your employer, but you and I, we're cool. <laughs> right. And then uh, we've got a special July Fourth. We're going to salute to the troops. It's our Independence Day. It's a different kind of Independence Day. But for me, I really focus back on what our military mm-hmm. is doing for us and what has done. And we've got a special guest, General Heiger, the uh, new commander of Edwards Air Force Base, has agreed to come on the show. Yeah. And that's cool because they do. I mean, Edwards is a test. It's a it's a test wing. Uh, and so they're doing that, that next generation stuff that our military is using that, that quite honestly helps keep your troops out of the way, your ground troops out of the way per se as warfare changes. Uh, that stuff's tested and vetted at Edwards Air Force Base in Eastern Kern County. And so they have such an important role out there in, in what the, the modern warfighter looks like and, and peacekeeper, if you will, as well. So, um, I'm looking forward to it and I'm, we're glad to have him, uh, I wonder what his call sign is. The last guy was Dragon, and he he went somewhere else. He went to become the installation and commander in Iraq for air operations there. So we'll have to ask what his call sign is. So definitely, <laughs> definitely. And we want to invite you to participate in the show and give yeah. us a shout out, whether yeah. it's for a veteran or an active duty member. I know my nephew has gone overseas, so. Um, I'll have a special message for him, mm-hmm. and I know that you've got family that have uh, been in the wars in the past, yeah. so it, it means something to us, and we want it to mean something to you, and we'd love to have you participate and reach out to us. If you'd like to share your voice, you can leave a voicemailed message at 822-2200, extension 119, and that's my voicemail. Just leave that voicemail. We'll use it on the show, or you can send an email, and we'll mm-hmm. read them. Yeah, at media at TehachapiCityHall.com. So uh, please uh, jump on that. We'd love to have you participate. And they've been coming in, too. That's they been are. kind of fun to watch uh, trickle in and, and uh, more on the way. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. We've got some cool stuff planned for that show on the 4th of July. And don't forget, Saracoso.edu, if you'd like information on Saracoso College here in Tehachapi or one of the other campuses. We appreciate your time. This is Tehachapod. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi designed for the people who live here or who would like to know more about this mountaintop community. If you have a question you would like answered, email media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We will try to answer it on a future episode of Tehachapod.